Thank you, Jesus, for your presence here tonight. Lord, we hear to your power and your glory in your house tonight, Lord. God with us. Your presence is here with us tonight, Lord. So, Father, right now, we just surrender our hearts to you. We surrender everything that goes in our mind right now. All the worries and anxiety of the world, Lord. Everything comes and kills and destroy from our lives, Lord. We surrender. You say, have your way in us tonight and have your way in this house tonight, Lord, as we glorify your name and acknowledge who you are in this place and proclaim your power and the glory in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It's one of my uh, favourite, actually D, my favourite Christmas carol. He brings tears to my eyes. So tonight I want to talk about Emmanuel, God with us. Pastor Paul touched on a pretty great message that God's presence and God is with us in the valley. Um, tonight I want to talk about his presence with us in a confusion, in the midst of a fear of unknown for our future. So if you go to your Bible, I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 1, 18 to 23, just as we were singing tonight about the birth of Jesus the Messiah. So from the verse 18, it says here, This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a lightress man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Verse 21. She will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Verse 23. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give a birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God is with us. Who loves the Christmas? Who loves the December? This is my favourite month of the year, not just because of Christmas, my birthday, my sister's birthday, our wedding anniversary, all in one month. We've got the celebration after celebration after celebration, God's goodness, reminder in a family. So this account is because this is written from the viewpoint of what was happening in Joseph's life. The Gospel of Luke also records uh, Mary, you know, there's actually Mary's song of the praise when, when the angel of the Lord appears to her. She's actually rejoicing that God has chosen her for such a great cause to give a birth to the child. But this is written from the life of Joseph. And I find it quite interesting because at the point of, of his life here, he was facing unknown of his future. So they Mary was priest to marry him, they were engaged. So it means in their culture in Judaism at the time, it's a legally binding commitment. This is not like something you can break off quick. Engagement lasted about a year in their culture. They had been living with her father until the uh, public wedding ceremony to take her into her house. But he actually had a legally binding with her. So it's not something he can break off next day and then forget about it. This is actually quite a big deal. And to find his fiance pregnant, uh, and then mind you, the, um, back in those days in their culture, the, the, the men, probably about 18, got married, and the girl were very young. They were like early teens, like our youth teens. So he knows he had enough and he was not involved in the pregnancy of Mary. This is a quite a big deal. Uh, in their law, by their law, uh, the adultery considered to be worthy of divorce. So here we read in the scripture, Joseph, who has been a lightress, tried to do the right thing his own understanding to quietly divorce Mary. 
because he wanted to obey the law, but he also wanted to show compassion towards his fiance. And then I think it was a permitted if you had two witnesses in a culture, you could actually have the private divorce back then. So in his human understanding, he's trying to resolve by his own strengths, what he can do. Until the angel of the Lord appears to him. Angel of the Lord means a messenger of the Lord appears to him, supernaturally convincing him that Mary's actually not being unfaithful. Mary's not lying. She is pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is all happens in the dreams, as we just read. And in mind, God actually does speak in that dream. You know, it's, it is worthy taking journal of your dream. I have so many times God speaks in my dreams, and later it makes sense. So if you have one of those dreams, you need to write it down, maybe ask the Lord for the explanation later. So it did take a supernatural appearance of an angel of the Lord to convince Joseph to do the right things by God's divine plan. I believe it was unexpected family planning for Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Joseph had in his mind this is what his future uh, family was going to look like. I don't think he had it in his mind that his fiance would become pregnant without him being involved. Let alone by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. What does it mean? So at that point, I believe he was facing uncertainty about his future. He was facing uncertainty about his marriage. He wasn't sure. How is it going to work? How is it going to work? It is actually interesting. I read some article. The few of unknown, apparently by the uh, research done by University of Chicago in the USA, is the underline of the many anxiety disorders. And it's actually considered to be the root cause of all fears. So why do we fear unknown? Why do we fear when we don't know? Because we fear of a threat or potential threat or harm that we don't know about. So we fear when we don't know, we don't understand, and also we don't have information about something or someone. So when we have a strangers in the street, um, and we are walking down the streets as our Asian girls do, and we had this guy with a footy, behind us and it felt like he was following us so we were kind of doing this because we didn't know him. He's a stranger to us. You know, we were few, fearful of him. That's just a, a small example of how the fear can play up in our mind. So just like a Joseph tried, when we fear of unknown, I think we try all our best to try and resolve in a way that it makes sense to us. We want to take control of something that we don't understand so that we feel secure. But can I say, from my own experience, and I'm pretty sure that everybody experienced this and we read it in the Bible, when you have control, things are going to be out of our control. Yeah. <laughs> because God is working divine, God is working supernatural, not like us, working natural. So when your things are out of control and natural, to me, is a perfect scenario for God's